Good morning. Today we are going to be working on chapter 13 and we are in lesson three. Um, and we're working on, it's called reporting, withholding, and payroll taxes. So we have already figured out how much we need to withhold from our employees' paychecks. We've calculated what expenses we still have to cover for them. Um, but now we have to have, we have a special form that we have to fill out to tell the government how much we have withheld and then we have to send that money to them. So that's what we're working on now is the paperwork that the government's going to require. On the first slide here, you're going to see is the employer annual report to the employees of taxes withheld. So this is going to be filled out um, by every employer who has withheld any taxes. It's going to be the amounts that are shown on the W-2. So W-2s are the individual tax papers that your employees are going to get. So you can see here John P. Butler. This is his W-2, and this is what we have to give him. It shows him how much we paid him, how much was withheld for, social, for federal, Social Security, and Medicare. And if he had a state tax withheld, that would be down here or any others. So all that information is going to be on the W-2. Um, employers must furnish these W-2s to each employee by January 31st of the current year. If an employee has, um, has quit or been fired or otherwise left, you still have to provide them with their W-2. Okay, the next form we're gonna look at is a 941. 941 is filled out each quarter I actually have one of these I'll be filling out um, here in a couple weeks. So the quarters run, you can see here, January, February, March, and then April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And your forms are due the month following. So I said I'd be doing it in a couple weeks. So in April, I have to fill this form out to show how much I paid my employees for January, February, and March. The top part is going to have the employer's information on it along with their employer identification number. This is a number given to them by the by the government. So they have that number. And then we're just going to go through and look at how to fill this in. So that's the heading number of employees. So it wants to know the number of employees that received wages during the pay period that included. So it's going to depend whether you're filling this out for the first quarter, second quarter, third or fourth. We are filling out the fourth quarter return. So it'd be the number of employees that we had on December the 12th. Now, I don't care how many we had in November, how many we had December 20th. They just pick one date and they want to know how many employees did you have on that date? How much did we pay in wages to all of our employees for the quarter? So this was just wages earned. So this was their salary or their hourly pay times their number of hours worked. Then any income tax withheld, oops, I got behind, income tax withheld, this is going to be like their federal um, or their state income tax withheld. You're going to add it all up for all of your employees, and that's going to go here. That's why in last chapter, we not only did um, the individual employees' earnings records, but we also had one to show what we paid out for every payroll, so at the end of the quarter, we could get those numbers. To come up with this, it's going to be the employee and the employer Social Security and Medicare taxes. So it doesn't just want what we withheld, but what we withheld plus our portion. So it's a really easy calculation. You're just going to take your number here on number two, which was how much was their pay? How much did all your employees earn? We're not going to look at the chart to see how much we withheld or how much we just calculated in the last section, but we're actually going to multiply this. So our total wages times... 0.124 or 12.4 percent. Now that number is double the 6.2 percent. So we withheld 6.2 percent. We were also obligated to pay 6.2 percent. If you add those together you get 12.4 percent. That's where that number comes from. So 6,169.30 basically half of that it was withheld and half of it is our share that we have to pay. Same thing with Medicare except this one it's going to be 2.9 percent because our employees have to do 1.45%. We have to do 1.45%. So that's why we're using this number here, 0 0.029 or 2.9%. You're gonna calculate those out in 5D. 
you're going to put the total. So you're going to add these numbers together. If you had paid your employees tips, if you're or not paid them, but if your employees had received tips, you could break that out here and multiply also um, because tips are taxable. 5D, you're just going to add those up, put the number here. Okay, we're going to skip down. Um, you might have things to put in here. I typically don't have any exempt workers, so I don't ever put anything here. So we're going to skip down here. Make sure you have all these boxes, something in them. We're going to skip down to line 6E, which is total taxes before adjustments. And it tells you exactly what to do. You're going to take line three. Oops, went too far. Line three, which was the total wages, plus line 5D, which was the amount... Um, Sorry, 5D, the amount of what we had owed for Social Security and Medicare, minus 6D. So if we had anybody that was exempt, and that answer is going to go here. So it tells you exactly what to do. So line three, oh, sorry, income tax withheld, plus the Social Security and Medicare tax we owe, plus subtract off anything if it was exempt. That's how you're going to get that number. Coming down here to box 13. Um, you're going to add lines 11, 12A, and 12E. So there's nothing really that goes in those too much except for this number up here on line 6, which is just going to be dropped down. They've cut out part of it to save room on the slide. So that number is just coming on down. Okay, the next part of the form is going to be where we need to show what we have deposited. So the government doesn't want us waiting until the end of the quarter to send them their money. They want their money every month, but then they want you to make sure that what you sent them is what you owed them. So this is just kind of a reconciliation form, if you will, or a summary, because we've already sent them all this money. So here it's going to want um, the state that we paid this for. So this would be PA, here in Missouri, you would write MO. You're going to check that you are a monthly scheduler. Most people are monthly schedulers. Um, the only people who are not, you could have some that are weekly if they have huge payrolls, um, or they could just be quarterly if they have like a very, very small payroll. And then you're going to list how much you deposited with them each month. Add that number up, that's your total deposits. You're gonna hope that that total deposits that should equal the amount that you got on the line 940 on the form 941 that we just did on the previous screen. So those two numbers should match. Okay. Also annually, we need to fill out this form. This is going to be, you do it with your W-2s. This is called a W-3 and it's just a summary of all the W-2s. So here is all of our workers pay. Here's all the federal income tax withheld all the Social Security and Medicare wages and tips and the amounts that we withheld from those. So everything is going to go on here and we are going to have to send that to the government to show what basically a summary of all of our 941s. Okay, so questions. When must employers furnish the W-2 statement to their employees? What did, did I say that that needed to be done? January 31st of the following year. Some people get anxious and they want to file their taxes before January 31st, but by law, your employer does not have to provide you the W-2 until January 31st. What taxes are included on your quarterly federal tax return filed by the employer? So that was on that 941. We um, had to record the federal income tax, social security tax, and the Medicare tax. Okay. So now let's go ahead and do work together. I'm going to close that out and make this one big. So here is our work together problem. We are going to be filling out a 941. And here's the information that we're going to need to fill out our 941. Um, this information along with our directions here. So our employer identification number is going to give that to us right here. So we're just going to type that number in. It's actually going to be 70 in the first box, and then it's dash 8418625. Oops. 
you're just taking this number here, 841-8625. Want to make sure I've got it right. Our company name is going to be Concept Designs. Um, we're going to skip down. We've got the address. We're just putting in the information they've given us, 12043 Washington Street. Oh, 12043 Washington Street. Um, it doesn't look like we have a suite or apartment number. Our city is going to be Naperville, Illinois. I'm abbreviating Illinois with the IL. 6540 dash, sorry, let me try this again. 60540 dash 4158. Okay, and it says that it's for the current year. Um, it looks like it's going to be for first quarter because we've got the information for January, February, and March. So we're going to click the one for first quarter, January, February, and March. Okay, number of employees who earned wages during this quarter on March the 12th. Um, it should show that. It says we had eight employees. So that number is going to be eight. Wages and tips. So we're going to need to add together these three numbers to get the total earnings. That's what's going to go on wages and tips. I'll go ahead and add that for you so we don't take time. It is going to be $35,640 even. For line number three, we want to know the income tax withheld from wages and tips. So we're going to add together all of the federal income tax withheld. So these three numbers together, it's going to go here, and that totaled $2,144. Okay. Now we're ready to fill out our part for our Social Security and our Medicare taxes. So this number that goes over here, this is going to be how much was our total Social Security wages or taxable. It's going to be the same as this one. So we just have to take the number down there. And then I'd go ahead and put it in your Medicare too because it's the same exact number. Okay, then we're going to come back here and we are going to multiply. So I'm going to get my calculator out. And we're going to take 34. 5,640 times 0.124. I got $4,419.36. And we're going to do the same thing with Medicare. We're going to take the 35,640 times 0 0.029, and that will be $1,033.56. Okay, we're jumping down to 5D now. That's going to says to add column 2. Right here is column 2. Lines 5A, 5B, and 5C. We don't have anything in 5B, so we're just going to add these two numbers together. That's going to give us $5,452.92. Okay, coming on down, we're going to skip through these because we don't have um, any exempt employees, so we can skip those. We're going to go down to line 6E, sorry, 6D. We want to make sure we put a zero because we don't want to leave any of those blank. Oh, it's not letting us put a zero. Okay, guess we don't have to. Typically on the actual form, I always filled in zeros on those so that they know that you didn't just leave it blank. Okay, so 6E is total taxes before adjustments, so we didn't have any adjustments. So we're just going to add together line 3 and line 5D, and those two numbers added together will be $7,596.92. Okay, we don't have any adjustments, um, no adjustments for six pay, no adjustments for group insurance. So now we're going to get to line E, and that's going to be what is your total minus all those adjustments. Well, since we didn't have any, it's still $7,596.92. Line 9 is, did we have any advanced in advanced earned income credit? We're not worried about that for this company, so no, we didn't have any. Line 10 is after you adjust for that, how much is it? So it's still the same number. You take the same number lots of places. Line 11, 
wants to know what was your total deposits, including prior quarter overpayments. So how much did we deposit for those months? Um, let me see. We should have the form that tells us. Okay, we're going to jump down here. So leave this form and we're going to come down here to this part. We're going to start with line 16 because it wants us to calculate those. So our state, it said we were in Naperville, Illinois. So we're in Illinois. And we are going to check that we are a monthly scheduled, or scheduled depositor. And what did we send in for our reports? So month one, we're gonna come all the way back up here to our instructions and we are going to add together for January 31st, these three numbers. So we want the federal income tax withheld, social security tax withheld, and employee Medicare tax withheld. So those three numbers added together is what's going to go for month one, $2,478.92. Let me double check that number here. Because I didn't, that is not correct. This is just what was withheld. So if you added those numbers together, you're going to get 1,000. 588, which is not correct. So where is the missing, missing amount coming from? Well, this is what was withheld for their social security and their Medicare tax. Remember whenever I said we had to basically match that. So what I would typically do is add together the 721.68 plus the 168.78, which is what we withheld for social security and Medicare. That equals $690.46 times two which is 1,780.92 plus what we withheld for federal, which is the $698. That is gonna give me the $2,478.92 for that, $2,478.92. So I want you to pause the video and you try month two and see if you can get it. Remember, add together your social security and Medicare tax, multiply those by two, that way you get what you withheld plus what you owed and then add that to your federal income tax. Okay, you should have gotten $2,538.70. Okay, go back up here to month three, try it again, add social security and Medicare tax, multiply by two, add federal income tax withheld, and you should get $2,579.30. Now we're going to add those numbers together. And we got $7,596.92. It says this must equal line 10. So we're going to come back up here to line 10. $7,596.92. Okay. Line 11 is where we're going to put that answer. Total deposits made. This was our total deposits that we made for the quarter. So those two numbers equaled. So then on 12A, it wants to know were we, um, it's asking about COBRA, we don't have any of those, so we're zero. Um, and then we're gonna come down here, exempt wages, we don't have any of those. Line 13 says, what is the amount due? So the amount due we figured, that is line 10. It tells you here, line 10. So if line 10 is more than line 13, we have to enter the difference and we have more instructions. So if we had accidentally overpaid or underpaid per quarter, then we would have to worry about putting something in there and how to um, adjust that. But we didn't, we paid the right amount. And then if we have an amount due, which we don't because we had already sent them as the exact amount. So if we had an amount due, if we had underpaid them before and we owed them five dollars or whatever we would put that in there and then we would have to um, send them a check if we had overpaid them then we could tell them to apply it to the next return or send a refund so we don't have any difference we were perfect so those are going to be zero okay 
make sure we got everything. Come down through here. We're not semi-weekly. Okay. Um, all right, that looks like that's all of it. So go ahead and grade that answer and that should be good. Work on application problem 13.3. Um, if you're not real sure about how we did this, go ahead and do the apply or do um, on your own so you can get another practice one. Make sure you do your application problem. I'll see you on the next video.